So in the previous episode, uh, the 2278 uh, election lead up started and I of course selected Hayes to be my candidate and I now have 200 days until the election happens and these are the options I have to take to support Hayes in becoming president. Now in episode one for those uh, who watched I took all six of the uh, focuses to uh, support Hayes during the crosses in uh, Navarro and we saw at the end of the previous episode that it gave me a boost and the boost actually looks like this so I have already got 60% support in Dayglow, Maxon and Shady Sands so I have a good head start in three out of the five uh, let's call them states of the NCR but I am not going to rest on my laurels I'm going to boost that even more so let's have a look at the options that I have Hayes campaigns so I get a 20% chance of a uh, it just gets it says uh, um, support or in the each fast area so we're going to do that then Hayes challenges the Brotherhood now this will raise my tension by 10 I don't want to do this uh, pushes for school and shady sands there's a uh, very br not really a detailed description but I'm assuming that will raise my support in shady sands so that's definitely on Hayes approaches Eureka now this is a big one because currently I have no support although neither does Murphy in Reading but by doing this uh, I will gain support in Reading, so this is definitely a must. And then, of course, this is Dayglow. Hope this will boost my support in Dayglow. Now, if I get a chance, I will do the bears going to the moon. This will give me a small uh, boost in every single state. But uh, if I can't get 200 political power, that's okay by me. Now, in some other news my uh, risky decision to ch update all my templates at once is starting to pay off I'm back in the green on demolitions equipment and support equipment so I've redistributed some factories off those two production lines and onto tanks because that is still going to be the longest to get back into the green and then for my focus because those decisions are 25 days long I want to stick to uh, some focus that are 30 days long so I'm going to start off with the capital fund in the old world a critical role of the government was to pass out funding for critical facilities and functions of our states and cities Wherever development needs to be facilitated, such as in Shady Sands today, the government of the Republic shall offer the necessary funding. So I'm going to get two civilian workshops to help with my construction, and I will actually gain uh, $50,000. Right. And let's go. So that's the capital fund set up, but more importantly, uh, the actions I've taken I have finished here. So let's see the result and I now have 100% in Dayglow, 100% in Shady Sands, that's brilliant, 40% in Reading, so this is basically over already, but uh, I'm going to send Hayes out campaigning one more time and the reason why I am not taking Hayes Challenges the Brotherhood is because this will raise my tension by 10 points now when my tension goes up you can see here I get minus 5% to my political power uh, income if you can call it that so I don't want to well I don't want that to happen so that's why I'm not doing raising the tension the capital fund done my next focus will be past the hub 
Redevelopment Act to get another two civilian workshops and some infrastructure. The hub has been battered by conflicts between federal forces, rival gangs and local militias. Now the violence is mostly quenched, it's time to start rebuilding some of the most dangerous areas. Okay, that's basically everything sorted for the hub and the whole conflict there. Now my next focus, because I have just created 8th Division, I will be recruiting uh, Big Jim Marshall over here. Big Jim is not a particularly complicated man when it comes to tactics. He values bravery and loyalty in his troops above any particular strategy or methodology. In many ways, this makes Big Jim's army overwhelmingly inflexible, but at the end of the day, the introduction of simple jewels once taught to him by the Desert Rangers would allow the NCR's average soldier to rise to new heights. And he's pretty good, comes level 3, some good skills. So we're going to get him. Let's have another look at the campaign. Going to send Hayes out once again. And okay, not much has doesn't look like much has changed. But uh, that's pretty good because it means Murphy's not getting any support. Although in ten days. We'll see what happens with uh, what happens in Reading, Shady Stands, and what ha happens with the Brotherhood. Oh, and the Den has declared war on the Jackals, so I've sent the uh, same two units of power armor across as volunteers. I'm trying to get them up to level 5. Uh, so that uh, they'll be more effective in my later wars against the Legion. So, Big Jim has arrived. Now, I am being rather split on what focus to take now. Uh, I would like to continue down this path to boost my army a little bit. But at the same time, I uh, would also like to support Mojave Territories here because helps them out but also gives me some nice boosts for research and political power and war support. But uh, with Hanlon winning uh, the choice to take out Boulder City instead of defending the dam, I think... I'm going to play it safe and go for infantry drills. As odd as it may seem, one of the first things uh, the Big Jim elected to do after appointed as leader of the NCR's military was to reinvent the wheel when it came to incredibly rudimentary infantry drills. The integration of simple squad tactics and more complicated marksmanship and urban assault tactics should have a marked improvement on the average soldier in the NCR's military. So I'll get the technology gym drills and let me just put him in charge of 8th and the war in uh, the war between New Reno and the Jackals is over. Uh, it was actually over quite quickly. What I did was I took my two power arm units, did a breakthrough down to Fallon here, so I cut them in half, then I did a breakthrough up to capture Hound's camp, and then as I was leading them south towards Yering, uh, Yerington, they basically lost enough victory points and the war was over. Nice and quick, only took about 30 days. Let's have a quick look at what's happening in the elections. Send Hayes out on the campaign again. And it's getting even better. Uh, we've uh, taken Reading 80%, Max is still sitting at 60 Shady Sands 80% as well, and Dago down here in the south 100% support for Grant C. Hayes. With... 90 days to go towards the elections, but as far as I'm concerned, it's basically already a done deal. 
all eyes are on four ways. While the NCR has begun to fully take on the mantle of a truly Californian republic, Arroyo has grown to consolidate most of southern Oregon. Both nations with their slowly growing empires have focused on four ways as a potential source of economic support. A natural junction for traders traveling from Oregon to California, four ways provide safe harbor for weary souls, taking a generous cut in the process. Despite their amassed wealth, four ways is being slowly torn two directions, towards the powerful New California Republic in the south and the upstart Arroyo in the north. Now this has opened up a whole bunch more of decisions here. <clears throat> and this reads, In the competition for domination over four ways, there are two paths available to us. The first is through building co co coercion, which will eventually result in a military campaign against our target. This will of course enrage our competition, as well as possibly provoke s some level of military response. A more peaceful but perhaps less satisfying route can be taken through gaining influence in Four Ways Merchant Guild. However, whatever power holds a high level of influence over Four Ways will have the upper hand in negotiations, allowing them to force the opposition into accepting disadvantageous agreements. Now, I'm not going to sit here and uh, pretend that I have uh, an expert in this situation as I've never actually focused on it before. But it's time to change that. So I am actually losing on both fronts. So I'm not going to focus on just coercion or influence. I'm going to go for both. So bribe the border guards will give me uh, strong coercion in four ways. So we're doing that one. Economic support will remove one of my workshops, so I don't want to do that. So that one goes away. Uh, begin the negotiations. We're going to invent opening strategy. I'll do that one last. Invest in four ways. I don't want to lose stability, so that's going away. Secure the border. I've got manpower, so we can do that one. It looks like I'm going for influence anyway. Tighten our grip on four ways. I'll leave these ones because... I'm quite low, they're quite high, so I'll turn those off. And let's have a look at this begin negotiations one. See what happens there. Okay, opening strategy. We must approach these negotiations with utmost care. We must decide on our goals for this upcoming summit and pursue them closely. With tensions being as they are, demanding too much will almost certainly lead to the negotiations breaking down. However, requesting too little is likely to limit our ability to benefit from four ways wealth. Our close relations will make them more likely to agree to our terms. So we have four options. 80-20, four ways gets a puppet. Uh, we get four ways as a puppet. Small bit of money and they get a small bit of money. 70-30. The uh, Fours becomes our puppet and they receive money. 60-40, we get money, they get money, and we both guarantee four ways. And then 50-50 is we just sign a non-aggression pact and both guarantee four ways. Because of this, I think I'm going to... 80-20, I think that's asking a bit, expecting a bit much. I'm going to go for, offer a 70-30 split. And see what happens there. And let's bribe the border guards one more time. Ooh, 70,000. Okay. Well, let's do it. All right, so negotiations broke down. Despite our best efforts, it seems no deal of the forwards issue will be reached anytime soon. Our diplomats have returned empty handed, and the race for influence continues next time and I lose 10 political power so Big Jim has finished reinventing the wheel uh, next focus I will be taking is the Brotherhood's teachings I want this uh, bonus uh, research to power army here while the Brotherhood of Steel's numbers dwarf in comparison to us there's no denying that their military technology is superior no doubt a result of their origins and their creed. Reverse engineering Brotherhood armor from battle at, 
our battle to heal us one will provide us with invaluable insight into how to produce our own power armor and in turn match their might. Now let's have a, okay that gave me gym drills. Let's have a look at that quickly. Gym drills over here. So infantry get defense, soft attack and heart attack, heart attack boost of 5%. Now there's 50 days left to the elections. Uh, the backing of the followers has changed things up quite a bit. Uh, I have still no support on Bono, but he's got 40%. And he has come back fighting and has got a little bit of support in all the states. So I'm still not sitting by and resting. I'm continuing campaigning. This is just not going to happen. I'm spending all my political power somewhere, everywhere else. For example, uh, the next negotiations for this uh, two ways for four ways comes up in eight days time. Okay, time for the second round of negotiations. Now, they have a very large advantage in coercion here. Seems like neither was actually bothered with influence so the 7030 didn't work so I'm going to go offer a 50-50 split gain a get an aggression pact and we'll both guarantee four ways and see how that turns out all right seems second time was a charm deal accepted Wisely Arroyo has agreed to our terms. This is a major diplomatic breakthrough and will hopefully put an end to this tiring endeavor. Now on to other things. So, all the stuff we had going on with regards to building bonds and investing in ways is removed. Uh, we are now gaining independence of ways, and we have a non-aggression pact with Arroyo, who is also uh, enacting a guaranteeing independence of ways. Now uh, let's get Hayes back up and running again. How long does this take? 25 days, 40 days to the elections. This will probably be the last time I can do this. And let's have a quick look at this map. Okay. Ooh, I've got 30% in Boneyard. Not too bad. 4 to 5, um, that's definitely mine. Let's end this. So the Brotherhood's teachings are finished. Uh, I am not going to choose a, another focus right now because in five days the election is uh, going to happen and then there's a very specific focus I want to take straight away. Ah, the fate of democracy. And so the people of the NCR have, through their senators, chosen a new president. Who shall it be? So now we have the choice of uh, going electoral deadlock, but uh, that's not what we're doing for this playthrough. Grants Grand Slam. So Orgold Murphy will retire from uh, the New California Republic. Politics will change. The older party will become the ruling party, and intellectuals will get a 40% boost in popularity. And Dreams of the Old World is done the spirit of 76 there was a time when america meant something to in, in the world when his army shielded his people across an ocean when a scientist solved the resources resource shortages that held back progress and held the stars in their grasp when his people were protected by governments and businesses that looked out for them but look at the ncr now devoted to untrampled expansion for no end Fa falling under the sway of Brahmin barons and caravan companies. Is this the future of the NCR? Mutant cows? Pitiful merchants walking from place to place? No. We can make the America dream a reality and revive the ideals of 2076 to the future and the past. And I'm going to get 100 political power and 100 command power. And here we have Grant C. Hayes, the director president of the NCR. A season of simple Simultaneous apprehension and enthusiasm has befallen the West, and the news came out of New California as quickly as it manifested. 
the new California Republic, founded on the values and institutions of the old world, swallowed its own tail with the election of Grant C. Hayes, preoccupied with every point in time save for the president. The incoming administration promises sweeping changes to the social and economic fabric of the republic. Observers regard the incoming administration with astonishment. The most learned citing the promised implementation of development economic systems not seen in practice since before the Great War to forecast an eminent golden age for the Republic. Few understand precisely what an inflation is nor what constitutes contradictory or expansionary monetary policy. Yet cautious optimism permeates the general atmosphere, though many do regard with disquiet the government's in principle stated intention to fondle, squeeze and pull on their hard-earned money. The 14 shine bright knowing their legacy is secured. So Dreams of the Old World was automatically completed. That is the first focus of Hayes' tree. I just want to re see read what we get here. So... <coughs> First of all, bad thing, minus 10% stability. Uh, Hayes will pursue an aggressive campaign to reform the NCR. Reforms are costly, however, I will receive 10% penalty to consumer goods, caps income, political power, and resource efficiency. This will last until I've completed this whole thing. Uh, furthermore, Lostels hate you for challenging their monopoly on toasters advanced energy weapons but mostly toasters and increase tension by 10 points now what i want to do straight away is the focus free speech america was long a believer in free speech and the pre-war government went to great efforts to ensure all citizens could hear what the government wished them to hear encouraged an ncr radio to adopt a position friendly to the administration would only promote cooperation and efficiency and I get another 150 political power and most importantly my stability will go up by 5% so with my political power I am going to hire Chief of the Air Force so I can bring down the production cost of my aircraft and then I have the ability to reopen the four ways talks which will basically restart the negotiations that I had earlier let me know what you think should I have a look at this again in the next episode uh, I'm not sure if it'll be successful because Arroyo has a massive advantage but let me know what you think about reopening the four ways talks and then as well, Karga has declared war on Urino, who's also at war here against Modoc and the Free States. So I want to let. So I want to know from you guys: Do you think I should support Urino, or just let the chips fall? where they may lie. He has a nice long one to go through in this man's army now. General Alexander Drummond stood at the Sequoia wood door that led to new, newly inaugurated President Hayes' office. He wasn't sure why he'd been called so late in the morning, but he'd never been one for being late or too early. He made a point to be on time no matter what. The President will see you now, General. The intercom buzzed into life and died just as it began. Entering the room, Drummond was met with a plethora of both old world history and new world mementos, ordered across the room in a neat and orderly fashion. If he hadn't known this was the same office as Aaron Kimball, Wendell P Peterson, Joanna Tibbet and Tandy herself, he would have thought accidentally stepped into a followers or even a brotherhood shrine or museum. Hayes looked up f at him from behind the president's desk holding a paper and simultaneously glancing at a portable terminal he had set up. Ah, General, good to see you. Before Drummond could even acknowledge being spoken to, Hayes 
waved his free hand at him, still looking intently at the paper and screen. Before you say anything, I've come to learn quite a bit about you. Would you mind if I shared? Drummond gave a brief head check. Splendid. Now, let's see. Born in 2199, trained with the Desert Rangers, Arizona Division, educated at the Artist School District just outside of the Boneyard, graduated from the Seth Military Academy with high marks in pre-war military history and an exquisite knowledge and interest in things related to the pre-war method known as World War II, going so far as to salvage a tank of all things. After graduation, you rose from a lieutenant to captain, with Tony giving you exceptional honours upon your actions as the hero of Navarro between 2242 and 2246. As of 2265, after approximately four decades of military service, you retired, only to come back at the request of the previous administration. Hayes looked up, giving the general a bright grin and wide eyes from behind his desk. I skimmed on a few details. Nobody needs to know where exactly you got the equipment you needed to deal with the Enclave back at Navarro with the war on, but you, my friend, are probably one of the few people in this backwater parasite of America who would probably understand what I am planning, and especially what I'm about to say next. You're already a general, and I can make you a brigadier or even a four or even five-star one with a snap, but how would you feel about a little historical reenactment? Drummond finally snapped up the courage to speak. Gruffly, he gave the inqu inquiry. A reenactment of what exactly, Mr. President? Hayes looked once more at the paper. It says you wrote a military thesis on how you would have more effectively and efficiently conducted several European operations, especially the ones like Normandy, the Bulge, and Musa. How would you like to put your theorem to test? Drummond finally broke through the stone face he had set himself, giving the President a wild smile. Mr. President, it would be an honor. So he gets a skill level and another uh, level to his planning skill. And there we are. Free speech is finished. Next one I want to do is reach out to elites. The NCR's elite may have little issue with much of Hayes' conduct to date, ignored his plan for a people's community. But the more recent talk of tax hikes and arbitration board for worker disputes disturbs many of them, such that they are gathering outside the capital. In fact, many of the leaders are in one room. So it's going to get me 7.5% uh, decrease in my stability. I'm going to get $300,000 lose 50 manpower and I'll remove the overlooked corruption debuff so we're gonna get that and there's only one thing I want to do with all this political power and that is higher I'm going to go for uh, Drummond since uh, he's leading my army and all that and then for military high command I'm going to go for Major Abbott the Tactician, mainly for the supply consumption decrease of 10%. Okay, so reach out to the elites. Now, this is, for me, one of the most important focuses to go for as Hayes, a brighter day. What drives a man forward is not the question and certainly not one that can easily answer. For the common citizen of the Republic, it is basic needs, a roof over their heads, a warm meal, not being pestered by raiders, toiling under the scorching sun every day, thousands of farmers, workers, fishers, and even brown barons dream of the same thing, having a better life than they already have, giving their children a better life. From our humble beginnings as a small town, we turn shanty towns into sprawling metropolises. We turn dying deserts green. Many corners of the wasteland blossomed under our rule, and most importantly, we continue to reach new heights every single day. Some of us citizens remember living in a shanty. Some were born in brick houses. Some never had any running water until moving to the Republic. Some never had the chance to express their ideas. Even now, our citizens sleep well, fully knowing the coming day will be a better day than the day before. So now the 
Research bonus is all very, very nice, but here's the big one. Replace complacent hegemony with re remilitarized economy. Which, uh, effective change, my population is going to go up by 20%, same as my recruitment. I will change to only 15% consumer goods, and my factory and dockyard output would go up dramatically as well. Compare that to hegemony now, where 35% of my factories are used for consumer goods and all my population, factory output and dockyard output was all 20% in the minus. So that's very important. Now I've reached the cap of my command power. So let me dish out some traits. Now Drummond has two. I want to give him heavyweight as this is the only thing that will boost um, the, my tank's attack and defense. And then I also want to give Sneering Imperialist to give the uh, penalty, uh, train penalty reduction of plus 15% so my troops will move faster. Now for the Brigadier General over here, um, I want to give Pain Train for his uh, power armor units as well as... Where is it now? Yes, motorized infantry attack and defense and organization loss when moving minus 15%. That will help them dramatically there as well. And Big Jim here is brand new. He has two traits. So he needs to get Mysterious Stranger for the infantry to start off with. And then Pain Train as well for the power armor. And there we have it. We have definitely ended this episode brighter than it started. Uh, I'm going to end this episode uh, here. But please let me know what you would like me to do with regards to New Reno. Should I help them with some more volunteers or not? And then four ways. Should I restart the negotiations for control of that state let me know what you think i will put up uh, polls on my, my community page for the answers for you guys to give and i'm gonna call it here thank you all very much for watching i'm having a hell of a good time with this playthrough and i will see you in the next one goodbye